Now we're talking about the audience insight tool. And all this is, is you go to your ads manager and you press the button that says audience insights. It's gonna be in your navigation bar. And now we're here and we're back with our firefighter, right? And we looked and justified why, if we're gonna sell something to a firefighter, why we would go after men, right? Because there's more men firefighters than there are females. Even though the audience was skewed towards females, we had to define who our avatar was that we're actually going after. And that was the male firefighter. For now, if you have something that works, maybe target women later. But we're market testing, remember? So now I want to talk to you about something um, about you know getting this really refined. And right here you can see we have 12%, 21%, 22%, and so on here. And you have this 65 and above is 8%. Now my rule here is that anything at 10% is not at 10% or above gets eliminated from the core testing. So in this instance, I would basically segment out anything above 65 years old. So that's gonna reshape everything here. And these numbers are pretty solid, right? We have 2.5 to 3 million monthly active people. So here's 13% of that audience being here, that's gonna have a good chunk of people in it, right? And it's gonna have plenty for us to target in a specific segmented ad. So what I wanna do now is I'm at a top level and I'm gonna go over to the page likes tab. And what I wanna focus on is this down here. And you can see that the affinity score over here is is in the, in, in the you know, teens, uh, roughly a little higher, maybe a few lower, but we have some decent numbers here. What your target is, is about 20X to really get, you know, into your audience and limit those likes by association. Affinity is how likely someone is, and at, at a top level, how likely somebody is who likes this interest to like this interest. That's what affinity means. Now you can see I'm sorted by relevancy. That's a mixture of the audience and the affinity gives me the relevancy. You can see that this has got a higher affinity than this one, even though it's a smaller audience, it gets bumped to number one. But some of the ones down here, like this one, huge audience, right? But the affinity is lower, so it's number six. So that's something to pay attention to. So now I wanna talk about what to do next. And we're gonna start talking about interest builds. Interest build is a, is a term that I use to describe how interest become developed. How do they get, how do they form on Facebook, right? Because not all interests are created in the exact same way. Some of these pages were built by people like us, marketers. Some of these interests were built by actual corporations who have tons of traffic outside of Facebook. So at a top level, we're gonna understand this to make sure that we utilize that information when it comes to the product lifecycle videos that you'll see later on. So at right now, what we want to do is look for what I like to call either brick and mortar or virtual interests that have presences outside of Facebook, okay? They were first formed outside of Facebook and then somebody said, hey, you need to make a fan page. And then they made a fan page. And they're not necessarily the best people at updating that fan page, perhaps. But it's big, it's vibrant, and they might have some interaction, but that's not necessarily the thing that we're worried about. If you remember back when I said traditional consumer segmentation, one of the things here is brand loyalty. Brand loyalty is represented in Facebook off things like this. Firehouse.com. This is a website that created a Facebook fan page. Now, it has 365,000 people who like it. However, 45 people, 58 people, 79 people. The engagement on this fan page isn't the best. You know, marketers know how to play the system. 
This might be a very legit company who gets a ton of traffic outside of Facebook. However, they don't know how to market on Facebook. And maybe they don't have the resources in order to, uh, to market you know, the proper way. And they just have somebody that posts stuff on their fan page and they know they need, they need to do it. I hope that makes sense for you. So what we're going to do is rely on the fact that someone who is a firefighter and within the community of firefighters liked this website. They went to this website. They maybe saw a button to like their fan page. Maybe they got um, a newsletter. And in that newsletter, there was a button to like the fan page. And then they like the fan page. Also, Facebook is really, really good at suggesting, you know, you should probably like this page. Now, Facebook is smart and knows that firehouse.com is pretty legit and that it needs to have a, you know, a firefighter like it. So maybe it serves it up to actual firefighters, people who lift firefighter in their job title and so on and so forth. So that's how these pages get built. Now, I support firefighters is a, is a fan page that was built by a marketer. He ran an ad, more than likely a PPE ad or a website conversion ad, and people liked that fan page through that, for the most part. So they were built in two different ways. This guy, who doesn't know how to post content to get more than 100 likes, even though he has 365,000 people that like his page, is probably not running ads. This interest was built through loyalty. So let's go back and I'm going to dive deeper into the niche by using that interest and removing the original interest. Now, all of my affinity has gone through the roof. Now I have way above 20. Now I have tons of interest. Yes, some of these might have been on the other screen that we just had, but it's not about what is on here. It's about what was removed. We want all the crap and the noise to be removed, and we want what's left to be the core interests for us to go after. So you can see that firehouse.com is the number one here, of course. And then we have tons of great, everything on here says fire. And we are going to use these interests in the coming sections once we get our store built and once we're going to start running ads. So that's how we refine our audience. We're going to find a core and then we're going to list these. Maybe we may write them down. Maybe just keep this window open or just remember the process that you got to get here and keep it for the videos coming up in the product, li the product life cycle sections. Okay, so let's move on and out of the fundamentals and into the core and the meat of this course where we start getting our MVP model store up. Okay, thanks. Talk to you in the next video.